Water, earth, fire, air. Long ago, the four nations lived in harmony. Then, everything changed when the Fire Nation attacked. Only the Avatar, master of all four elements, could stop them. But when the world needed him most, he vanished. 100 years passed, and my brother and I discovered a new airbender named A. And although his airbending skills are great, he has a lot to learn before he's ready to save anyone. But I believe that Aang can save the world. So if you haven't figured it out, we are talking about Avatar today. So I've actually tried to film this review like three or four times, and every time something has gone wrong. The microphone has been off, construction has been too loud, it's loud enough right now, but I can film. You know, planes are going by, my camera car got erased. This review has been in the works for like three months, and uh, it's finally here. So today we're gonna talk about all six uh, comic book arcs that take place after Avatar The Last Airbender ended. So the show, and if you haven't seen the show, what are you doing? Go watch it. It's amazing. It's beautiful. It's perfect. It's one of the best television shows I've ever seen, uh, so go watch it. So the first story arc takes place immediately after the show, and that is The Promise. So The Promise follows Aang and Zuko as they try to rebuild the world that has been left kind of devastated by uh, what happened at the end of the show. Uh, there's a lot of political turmoil, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna talk about the Fire Nation colonies. So the Fire Nation colonies were set up in um, the Earth Kingdom, and they consist of both Fire Nation residents and Earth Kingdom residents, and they think uh, the, the best thing to do is just to remove the Fire Nation colonies from the Earth Kingdom as they were a representation of, you know, Fire Lord Ozai's uh, shitty ambitions. However, the dilemma comes when they discover that the uh, fire colonies actually, in, they, they, they like being how they are. They are a mingling of both Earth Kingdom and Fire Nation, and uh, so now Aang and Zuko need to try to figure out what to do, and they might end up on opposite sides of this issue. This was a fantastic first arc, um, introduction to the characters after the show. Oh, and I didn't mention, so um, the first five of these story arcs are, illust are illustrated by Guri Hiru. It, um, it's a team of, I think, two artists, and um, they're all written by Jean Luen Yang. And Jean Luen Yang's writing is absolutely phenomenal. He captured the voices of the characters so beautifully, and uh, Guri Hiru's art style um, feels just like you're watching an episode of Avatar. But The Promise as a story arc was one that I really, really liked. It feels like one of those like really good two-parters from the series itself. Um, and I will have to say, it is a good introduction back into the world of Avatar. If you, it's been a while since you've seen the show and you want to dive into what happens, this is the best place to start. I ended up giving this, I think, uh, a three out of five. It's a, a solid read good characters, solid conclusion, nothing kind of like too surprising or like really noteworthy. It's just, it's a, it's a good romp. Now, the second story arc that Jean Liu and Yang wrote is probably the most important one. And if you're only gonna read one, you gotta read this one. And that is The Search. Who are they searching for? Zuko's mom! So all those answers, that cliffhanger, that huge cliffhanger at the end of the series. You get answers here, you get answers! And yes, the, like all of these story arcs are written um, kind of like in consultation with Brian and Mike, the creators of Avatar. So yes, this is canon, obviously. And uh, it's so beautiful and fits perfectly within the show. It actually enriches so many parts about the show where like, I went back and watched the show again after reading all these story arcs, and guess what? Reading these made it better. So, the gang, and Zuko, and also Azula. <laughs> they all go looking for um, Zuko's mom as they get a hint to where she might be. And let me tell you, this story surprised me so much. 
all the kind of beautiful, amazing things and tropes that I love in stories kind of popped up in this book. Um, this actually made me cry. This story arc made me cry. Um, just because it captured that emotion of... Mm -hmm. It's just so good. It's so good. If you're gonna read one of these arcs at all, please read the uh, the, the search. Please read the search. It's so, so good. And then we have The Rift. So this is the third story arc in the series, and uh, this, I think, is one of my least favorites. I enjoyed this. I enjoyed reading this. However, I think I don't know. I feel like the other story arcs were so, so good that this one being only okay really stood out to me. Um, the Promise was okay, but it like there are some elements I enjoyed about it more than this one. Um, in this, we have Aang and Toph. Um, the rift is mostly between them as they are going to this town, and it was once like this kind of sacred spiritual site for a previous avatar, Yang Chen. And... Aang kind of wants the town to destroy their factory and go back to the ways of nature. And Toph is like, uh, no, I support industrialization and like forward progress in like civilization. And so that's where the kind of clashing becomes between the two of them. There's also some spirit shenanigans with uh, General Old Iron. And this was fun. But at the end of the day, I think this might be skippable. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't know about skippable um, because Toph actually does encounter some members of her family in here. Um, there's some interesting, like, lore things in here. So there, there, there's good stuff in here. I just, for some reason, I this this didn't click with me as much as some of the other ones did. So. I would read, if you're invested in Avatar, if you're invested in reading these comics, I would pick this up. If you just kind of want the best ones, you can maybe give this one a pass. So after one of the most meh-ish arcs in the series, we get the second best one, and that is Smoke and Shadow. This is the fourth story arc, and this is phenomenal. Interestingly enough, this story mostly just follows Zuko. Um, Aang comes in like about halfway through and uh, Sokka and Katara are actually like not in this at all. And that's fine, honestly, because we got so much uh, like in the Fire Nation and I think exploring the Fire Nation is one of the most interesting parts about the show, like in the third season. That's one of my favorite parts about that season. Uh, and we get a lot more of this. So we have uh, a new Ozai society that is seeking to overthrow Zuko. We have spirits that are kidnapping children in the night. We have Zuko and Mei angst, which is amazing. This story arc just has some of the best moments in the series for me. Um, it has one of the best reveals. Like, when a certain thing happens in this book, I got chills because I was just shocked because I didn't see it coming. And that's the best, like, I don't want to give any spoilers away, but this is phenomenal. And if you're, like, searching for the best ones, the search, Smoke and Shadow, hands down the best ones. Obviously, that's a 5 out of 5, by the way. And then Smoke and Shadow is followed up by another amazing story arc, and that is North and South. And this follows what Sokka and Katara were doing during the events of Smoke and Shadow. So for the first like two thirds of this book, it's mostly just Sokka and Katara in the South. And if you've seen Korra, you know that the South becomes a relatively like, um, city. <laughs> there are more buildings and stuff in the South than Korra. And so this story arc kind of exists to explain how that happens. So uh, they return home and they find that their father is now the chieftain of the South, which is so cool. Um, and then there are some emissaries from the North who are helping the South kind of like build up and become more like industrialized almost. And the tensions in this book were so interesting because it's uh, the tension between like uh, progress and kind of like tradition and so there are factions that kind of want the South to stay as it is. And there are some factions that want the South to become more kind of like advanced. And like this book does not fall on a side of saying one side is right, one side is wrong. Because there are 
good people on both sides, there are people who do bad things on both sides, and it leaves you with just the, some of the most interesting moral kind of questions in the series, which I loved. Also, this just is a perfect end to Jean Lu and Yang's run because this was the last book where him and Gert Hiru um, teamed up. And it's really sad because they captured um, the gang so perfectly. And so it was just really sad to see um, his art come to an end or his series come to an end in a way. And I just love loved loved it loved this book five out of five and the last book as of now is imbalance by faith aaron hicks and illustrated by peter wartman now this is interesting to me so obviously there's a new art style um which took a like a second to get used to because although it like the character designs are the same the art doesn't quite feel like the show did and it feels more like, I was more cognizant that this was um, a graphic novel, where, as in Jean Liu and Yang's and Guri Hiru's run, I was, like, very much in it, and it played like the show did in my head. This one, I kind of had to strain a little bit more. And also, I think um, Faith Aaron Hicks just really took the, um, this arc to get used to writing the characters and their voices because they didn't necessarily feel like the gang, not 100%. Towards the end, I feel like there, there were some moments where it really captured um, the feel of the gang, but overall, like, they just kind of felt a little off during this arc. So this story arc follows the gang as they are in Cranefish Town, which is the eventual setting of Republic City in Korra. So you kind of get to see the um, beginnings of that, which is really cool to be fair. Although it's kind of weird because I feel like they were setting up one of the other cities in the other comic book arcs to be Republic City. And then they just kind of did a double reverse and were like, no, it's Cranefish Town. So that's interesting. There is a extreme bender and non-bender conflict in this book which is really interesting if you've seen Korra in season one, you know that the non-benders are such a strong like element and antagonist. And actually here, the benders are the antagonists in uh, this conflict, which is extremely interesting and a very nuanced take. So although I didn't necessarily graft onto the characters' voices, I do have to say that the narrative itself was really interesting and engaging. And so I'm really excited to see where Faith Aaron Hicks and Peter Wartman go from here. Final rating on the series so far, uh, I would give The Promise about a three out, of, three out of five stars. I would give The Search about a five out of five stars. Um, the Rift, three out of five. Smoke and Shadow and North and South, both five stars. And then Imbalance, again, like three, maybe four stars. So the three essentials that I think that you have to read if you're a fan, if you only want to read a couple, I would definitely pick up The Search, Smoke and Shadow, and North and South. The other three, um, The Promise, The Rift, and Imbalance are both, like, they're all good. However, if you skip them, wouldn't be mad. And there actually is another book that just came out, which is a collection of a bunch of different short stories that take place during um, the show and after. Um, I didn't include that here just because I really wanted to focus on the actual arcs and the themes and the narratives, which is really cool, but uh, I'm sure the short stories are also a kind of good addition to the universe. So that's been my review of the Avatar comic book series by Jean Liu and Yang and Guri Hiru and also Faith Aaron Hicks and Peter Wartman. I definitely think it's worth checking out if you love the show, if you grew up with the show, if you found the show recently and it's become like a new friend to you, these will make it feel like going back into that world, which is amazing. Also, if you want more like written content, the Kiyoshi novels by FCE are perfect, are amazing, fantastic. I'll link both of the reviews uh, in the description box box below because I think they're phenomenal, some of the best books I've read all year, and if you really, really want Avatar content, it's perfect for that. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as always, um, please like if you enjoyed this video. Uh, comment below if you've read any of these Avatar comics. Have you even watched Avatar? Have you read the Kyoshi novels? Let's talk about Avatar in the comments. 
and uh, subscribe here if you would like to see more of me and my rambling stuff. Check out my socials in the description box below because I post some really cool pictures and thoughts on both Instagram and Twitter <laughs> and that's worth checking out. Also my Goodreads is down below as well, so check that out. Thank you guys and I will see you next time. Bye!